Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is one of our first weekend with shows, but this time we get to have a weekend, first weekend with the new iPhones and with the new Apple Watch. Uh, so it's sort of a double header in one weekend, which is, is kind of nice. Mm-hmm. So we have a, uh, a panel here of consisting of three. The fourth member of our panel had to cancel out at the last minute. But we're going to have a little fun talking about what we all bought and why and what our first impressions are. So first up, uh, let me introduce who's here and then we'll get to it. Um, Dr. Robert Carter is back. Robert, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me, Chuck. It's good to be back. We hadn't done this for a while and it's been an exciting weekend. Maybe not quite as much sleep as I'd like to have had, but I sure have had fun setting up a couple new devices. (laughs) <laughs> right there with you, Robert, right there with you. Um, of course, you're known uh, for the Tech Doctor podcast as well. That's still going strong. Yes, we uh, recorded and published uh, an episode yesterday all about the new devices, and we had a good time recording. And amazingly, there's a lot more in iOS 12 and Watch OS 5 than you might initially have thought. We all thought it was kind of a maintenance release, but there's a lot of stuff there actually. Hmm. So in other words, you scooped me. <laughs> oh, Chuck, we could never do a thing like that. <laughs> also with us, Mr. Patrice Brendamore for his very first time on Mac Voices. Patrice, welcome. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me. It's a great honor actually. Well, I, I, I appreciate it. We've, we've shared so many times on, the, on uh, the British Tech Network, but I've never had you on here, and I have no idea why. Well, it might have, I mean, just probably time zones and, and just opportunity. I mean, I'm usually, I'm working, so. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't I was we all? lucky. I mean, I was lucky today. It's like, okay, this works. Let's do it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so for the folks who are not familiar with you, how about if you tell us uh, what you do, and except for all that top secret stuff? <laughs> yeah, I can't talk about that. If if I did, I would need to kill you. No, that's not true. Um, no, I actually work for a, as a product manager for a medical software company here in, in Arizona. Uh, we're actually global, so I work on a global project. And other than that, I'm on a bunch of tech podcasts, for example, on the Mac show on the British Tech Network. And then I have like a couple of my own shows. Uh, deconstruct and tech hangout and so on. I do I do a lot of tech basically, and I'm also a developer by trade. I mean, I basically started out as a developer and then moved into product. Is that all, Patrice? Uh, probably not, but it's good enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, let's let's go around and and make sure everyone knows what we acquired over the weekend in the way of new Apple tech. Robert, what did you pick up? Well, I got the new iPhone 10S, which is identical, at least in form factor, to the iPhone 10 that I had last year, but it's got some new goodies inside, so I'm excited about that and excited about the stereo speakers being improved, which they do sound a bit better, and a number of other things, and also got the 40 millimeter space gray uh, aluminum, I guess it is, Apple Watch. So got that all set up and going and okay, it's fun. All right, Patrice, how about you? Well, I almost got the same thing. So I got an iPhone XS, uh, XS Max in uh, 256 gigabyte in gold. And then I also got the 44 millimeter Apple Watch also in gold, same thing. Other than that, aluminum standard in- stuff. Interesting. So you went with the gold finish. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I think at some point, even a couple of years ago, I got sick with 
just silver or space, I mean, usually just space gray or any kind of black or gray. So whenever Apple has a color that's kind of different, I mean, I, I, I bought the rose gold iPhone 7, I want to say 7S or 7, uh, 7 Plus probably. There was no 7S, 7 Plus. Um, so whenever there's a color that stands out, like I get that one. Okay. Just... Well, just for the record, I picked up the um, the iPhone XS two fifty six space gray. Um, I did not go for the for the Max, um, and I also got the forty four millimeter space gray Apple Apple Watch Series four. So it sounds like we're we're all in there sort of pitching, um, depending mm-hmm. on you know what our pre- particular preferences were. Yeah. Um, the one other thing I wanted to wanted to just ask uh, before we get into some of the details is how was how was your buying and delivery experience any problems any issues robert it was really smooth for me chuck actually probably the smoothest it's been in terms of the ordering i got online and probably had my order done of course i got up at 2 a.m which is uh midnight on the pacific coast out there and Uh But I got in there and had my order placed, I would guess, all done by 2.10, 2.15 at the latest, something like that. And it all just went right through. So either Apple has improved the process a fair amount. I use the Apple Store app on the mm-hmm. phone, and it went really smoothly. Yeah, the process is definitely way better than before. I mean, uh, I signed up for the upgrade program and I was able to pre-qualify on, I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, right after the the announcements, basically, I was able to pre-qualify, pick out what phone exactly I wanted. And then uh, on Friday, it was very smooth. Basically, the, the second the store app came live, it told me, hey, you want to like finish your upgrade program now? And it was literally... Confirm all your details. This is the phone you wanted. You can change it if you want, but if not, there's one button. I pressed that one and it was done within like five seconds. I didn't even pay enough attention to the data. I was like, yeah, we'll be fine. Nice. So it was it was fast. Yeah, I had the same experience. Um, I, I chose to make sure I got the order in fast for the phone just in case there was a, mm-hmm. a crazy rush and then took just a couple extra minutes to order the watch because there was no yeah. way, at least that I could find, to add the watch to the order. Um, I had one little hiccup, but I have to say Apple addressed it very, very well. I don't know why because my address in my Apple account is absolutely correct and it came through you know, within just a couple seconds, I ordered the watch and the address was correct. Mm-hmm. But for some reason on the on the phone order, it added a two to the street oh. number. Hmm. So I got on the phone with Apple the next day after receiving the confirmation and said, hey, this needs to be fixed. And I was really a, a little bit worried about it because the, the address that it ended up <laughs> having um, or, or mistakenly having um, didn't did not exist. And the last thing I want to do was to have my phone flying around, you know, all, all weekend trying to find me. Yeah. But they got it addressed very quickly, no problems. And um, so the, the deliveries came about midday and it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. deliveries were, were, uh, went smoothly for me. It's always a bit frustrating in my neighborhood. UPS never seems to get here until about five, six, seven in the evening. Same. So <laughs> on launch day, you just wait all day. That's the way mm-hmm. it's good. Yeah, I was following the UPS truck from, I think, 10 a.m. on, and it was like in the area here. I was just circling my apartment complex <laughs> a couple of times, like, <sighs> delivered already. I mean, it was like every every five minutes, it was like, okay, it's almost there. It's almost there. And then it took till like four o'clock or whatever to actually. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, so which which device did you open first? Patrice, how about you? Because uh, you have two boxes sitting there. Which one couldn't you keep your hands off of? I mean, for very pragmatic reasons, the iPhone, because I had to set up the iPhone first before I can set up the Apple Watch. So, I mean, I would have gone with the Apple Watch first because that was the one I was more excited about. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to set up the Apple Watch with a new phone, so that was kind of obvious. Okay. Robert? I went with the uh, phone as well and actually didn't, 
open up the watch until the next morning because I had a not a terrible experience setting up the phone, but not exactly as smoothly as some people have said that they thought it would work. Now, my, I had no problem getting my original iPhone 10 to communicate with the new phone and transfer the settings from the old phone. That went really smoothly. But when I got to the place where I was supposed to be able to restore from my iCloud backup, it told me the words you do not want to hear at this moment, cannot restore from iCloud backup. Oof. And oh, no. so I thought, well, maybe Apple servers are getting slammed with everybody trying to mm. restore their new iPhone at this exact moment or something. And I tried two or three times and kept getting that same message and restarted the phone. And uh, finally on the fourth or so try, it went through and restored from my backup and mm -hmm. went pretty smoothly. Um, I had all my data on the phone and had everything in folders the way that it was set up on the other phone, which was nice. When I tried to use Overcast to listen to a podcast, I discovered that Overcast wasn't showing that I had any podcast and mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure why, but I finally decided for some reason when I opened Overcast on this new phone, it went ahead and created a new account that didn't have anything in it. So mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to go ahead and delete the account. It's, it's going to delete all your data. And I, I think, well, that's not really true because it isn't showing any data. So I deleted the account and as soon as I did that, the screen popped up and said, hey, you already have an Overcast account. Would you like to use those podcasts? And I'm like, yeah, that's what I was trying to do in the first place. So a few things like that, but nothing major. Yeah, I think there were a couple of apps and services that had issues. I mean, for example, I have a Discover credit card and I couldn't activate it on Apple Pay because it just timed out every time. Mm. And I've had that, I mean, the similar experience that you had with Overcast, I've had with other apps where it's like, I think they were just getting slammed with yeah new i mean activation day setups and they they couldn't handle that so that's kind of surprising i didn't expect that yeah I, i'm happy to report that i had no issues um doing the, doing the upgrade uh, or the transfer over to the new phone um i uh, sort of along the lines of some of what you were experiencing robert i had to i got my new phone set up and i let it populate as long as i could and then I had to get on the road and, and away from Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So there were a few things that didn't quite work completely yet. Oh, happily, Overcast was one that loaded my podcast seamlessly. I didn't have any okay. problems, so I had something to listen to. Um, but then I, I went in and looked for my photos. My photos weren't there. Um, mm -hmm. But when I got home, just you know, leave the phone alone, let it do its thing on Wi-Fi, and in no time, I had everything back. So it was Excellent. it was a piece of cake. Yeah. the the other The other issue I had was when I set up my Apple Watch, uh, because it was showing a backup of my Apple Watch from I think beginning of August. That was the latest backup it had. And I mean, I tried. I mean, <laughs> as Apple is in some cases, there is no backup button. There is no backup button for the Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. uh, it is supposedly included in the iPhone's backup, and I obviously had a I mean, I basically just had a, I created a backup right before I started migrating over. So that wasn't the case, but I, there was nothing I could do. It just, I mean, I tried it a couple of times, rebooted devices and whatever. It just didn't create a backup for my Apple Watch. So I just said, okay, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to use the, the August backup. And that's, that's the latest I got. And I haven't noticed any issues with it. So I'm, I'm guessing it's fine. I had the same problem, except a little bit worse, the latest backup I had was from November of 2017. Oh, no. And I have no idea where it pulled at or why it was mm -hmm. still in the cloud, honestly. So I just set up the watch from scratch as a new device, and it mm -hmm. it's not that, doesn't take that long to do that on, on the watch. So yeah. it really wasn't a problem. But I, I there must be a glitch because you're, I didn't know other people had the problem, but... I did the same thing as you, backed up my phone immediately after I had unpaired my 
Series 3 watch, assuming mm-hmm. that that would put a, a backup of the watch in iCloud, but it didn't happen, or at least it didn't show up. No, I tried the same thing. I tried backing up before and then unpairing it and backing up again after and nothing really did that. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I could have restored uh, like a backup from my original uh, Apple Watch, like Series Zero. That was funny. <laughs> well, like, that was still in there. <laughs> yeah. There's no way to delete it. So, I mean, at least I haven't found any way to delete that, but it's still in there. So That's a strange glitch, though, <laughs> that it would show something from last year. Yeah, it's, as the latest backup. Yeah, that's weird. Well, I'm and I'm surprised to hear both of you because um, I thought that when you unpaired the Apple, your your Series Three, that it automatically created a backup because that's what I did and mm-hmm. that's what I got. I had a backup that was created at exactly the date and time that I unpaired my watch, and it was just sitting there waiting to be restored to my new watch from that backup. Now I saw a bunch of old backups as well, no question. All right. Yeah, it's, that's how it's supposed to work, but at least, I mean, for us to, at least it didn't. Yeah, sure didn't. Yeah. Well, Minor compared to wh- how badly it could have been, but it, but it yeah. still was uh, strange. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm, 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 I, you know, we're always going to have just a couple glitches here and there, but this probably, for me, was the most seamless transition that, mm-hmm. that I've had. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it sounds like everybody, with, for practical reasons or or ever, any other reason, um, was probably most excited over the Apple Watch, and and I I have to admit I felt like during the keynote the Apple Watch stole the show, and so I too was anxious to get it, um, and I can I can report to you that yes it is forty four millimeters it is definitely bigger physically bigger, but. Not obnoxiously so. When I put it on my wrist, and I, I have reasonably small wrists, um, mm-hmm. that it it didn't over overwhelm me. I I I slid on my old band, um, and strapped it on, and kind of went about my business, and really haven't noticed any additional weight or or any bulk or anything. Good. No, definitely, definitely the same. I mean, um, I didn't even notice that it's physically that much bigger. The biggest like difference for me where it really looks huge almost is the screen because the screen is definitely significantly bigger and you notice that like i mean every time i look at it it's like wow this is big still yeah. I mean, to this day. <laughs> new watch faces with a lot more complications mm-hmm. and I, I didn't really have any intention honestly of getting the series four because i bought the series three last mm-hmm. year and I thought, surely I can sit it out for a couple of years because I went, I think, from the Series 0 to the Series 3. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I surely don't need to buy another Apple Watch. But I, I, there are some things that really that I really wanted. I really wanted some of the health options, having that I go out and walk quite a bit for exercise in my neighborhood and just knowing that I have that option uh, if I need it, should I ever fall? Hope I never do, mm-hmm. but it's nice to have that. And it's really nice to have the uh, haptic feedback on the digital crown. And it's really great that the speaker is quite a bit louder. So those things just, uh, and, and of course, it's nice to have the extra screen real estate with the, with the additional complications and all. But those things just kind of pushed me over the edge. And before I knew it, I was waving my credit card around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I my experience so far has been very positive. Um, a couple of things that, that I noticed right away. First of all, the screen is seems to be so much brighter. It's probably just a function of the size. But uh, the, the, the audio coming from it is definitely louder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sub- substantially so. Yeah, I upgraded from a Series 2, so for me, the upgrade was even a little bit bigger, but yeah, yeah, I, I definitely can confirm that. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, the, the, health fe- the health features were the selling point. I mean, I work, work in the health industry. Uh, my family has a history of uh, like heart issues. So for me, especially the, the health tracking and the ECG were like big, big features and surprising features, to be honest. One thing I didn't realize about the, the, the feature that does the fall detection is that that's turned off by default unless 
you're 65 years or older, mm -hmm. and it's turned on. So for anyone who wants it and who isn't 65, you'll need to go in and turn yeah. it on. And it actually warns you that that might, I mean, if you have an active lifestyle, if you're exercising a lot, that might like trigger false positives. Yeah. So I, I thought about it. And by the way, I saw the warning, I was like, mm, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that for the moment. Mm -hmm. I'll see how other people deal with it or how good it really is and how, how like how many false, false alarms they get. And then yeah. I might turn it on down the line. Yeah. I'm sure that is a risk false alarms and I will we'll be hearing about that. I imagine, but yeah. it's really cool to have that feature. If you ever get in that situation where you fall and you can't move that you can get some help rather mm -hmm. than lying there. Yeah. And I mean, the, the thing is you don't have to turn it on all the time. I mean, it's fairly easy to turn it on or off. True. So, I mean, if you're going on a longer hike and you're, you're like, well, I kind of <laughs> want to be on the safe side, then you can enable it then and just disable it when, whenever you're, you come home. That's, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, I, I don't know about you two, but I spent a fair amount of time setting up, you know, the new complications with the new, you know, the, the, the new face that gives you, you know, puts like five yeah. or six complications on. Mm -hmm. the, the, the larger screen definitely makes this finally viable yeah. Um, yeah. To, to have all those on there. But it also, it's like, it's this barrage of color and light mm -hmm. that I, I'm not, I just need to get used to it. I guess because yeah. I before I had a bit of a monotone face um, mm -hmm. that still had complications on it, but wasn't nearly this busy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, the funny thing is, I set up and the new watch face like you did, and then I immediately reverted back to the Siri watch. Face. <laughs> that seems oh. to be my favorite for some reason. I'm sorry, which one, Patrice? The Siri watch face. The oh, the Siri watch. Yeah, okay. That's, okay. for some reason that seems to be the best for me. Yeah, I used the modular one before, and uh, I'm trying one of the new ones out now as well, but I've also got the modular set up because some of the things that I use, that I like to use, one of the weather programs I like is called Weather Gods, and it just does, it, it's not available on the other watch faces. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting how some complications are available in some places and not other places. Yeah, it might just, I mean, I, I know from the API side, I mean, as I said, I'm a, also a developer by like trade. Um, as far as I remember, there are new complication types that you have to implement if you want to support that. And I see. Well, we didn't. Well, and before this, this series came out, we saw developers, some developers kind of abandoning the watcher or, or mm -hmm. dropping support for their complications. And I'm just wondering if this larger screen now and, and especially the, the new complications faces, but also the, just the larger screen will make some of those things maybe a little more viable than they were before, yeah. uh, depending on the kind of app you're developing. I, I mean, especially the audio player apps seem to be coming back. I mean, I saw Audible, uh, Castro. No, Castro doesn't support it yet, but... Um, Overcast. Overcast, mm -hmm. Overcast does, yeah. Um, they, they brought back their like native podcast or like audio players. Yeah. Which is exciting because that's something I've been hoping for for year, basically since the version zero and finally we're getting there. Still not perfect, but at least it's like a viable player now. Have you tried it? I haven't tried it, but uh, one of the real problems before was how long it took to download a podcast to the watch. I, I understand that's a good bit faster now. It's faster. It's still slow. Yeah. <laughs> so faster than before. And you finally, I mean, you get feedback. The, the biggest issue from what I remember from Overcast was that Overcast couldn't even tell you how far it was, how fast it was, because it didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, now you can at least see, okay, it's X percent uploaded or whatever. It's still slow. I mean, I, I uploaded a couple of audiobooks into Audible and a couple of podcasts in Overcast and it's still slow because there's no way to directly download from the watch. You basically have to converge it on the phone and then push it up via like usually Bluetooth or something. Okay. So it's still, unfortunately still slow. You have to plan ahead. Yeah, that, that too. Yeah, that, that definitely. I mean, some apps are from what I've seen, they're able to, I think, download new podcasts automatically for you. I think overcast does that. Um, but it's, as I said, it's still slow um, because it's not just like on an iPhone where it just pings the server, downloads the file over Wi-Fi or whatever 
cellular, whatever you have. Um, and then that's it. It can't do that. It actually has to go through the phone. And I think that's a big, from my perspective, a big issue and something I wish Apple wouldn't have done. I wish, and I think a lot of podcast players wish that too. Is it the same thing, I guess, with the Apple podcast app? It has to go through yes. the phone. Uh -huh. Yes, as far as I, I mean, as far as I know, at least, I might yeah. be wrong about that. Mm -hmm. I haven't done any research on this. Is it, Patrice? You said it's converting the uh, the uh, the podcast files. Is it, yeah. is it shrinking them down in fidelity or? Um, um, I mean, as far as I know, that's that's more a overcast specific issue. That overcast wants to like include all the filters and stuff. So they, Marco actually creates a new podcast file basically on the device and then pushes it up. Um, but as I said, Audible, as far as I know, doesn't do that and still took a while to like send it, send it to the watch. Yeah, a lot of those Audible books are not, I mean, they're compressed, but they're not as compressed as a lot of the podcasts. So I could imagine that would take a while. Yeah, exactly. So as I said, it's... It's better, definitely, and I've used it, and it's really useful. I mean, I can finally go for a walk with my dog and I just take my Apple Watch and my AirPods with me, uh, but it's still kind of a pain in the ass. One person was saying that she would like to be able to play audio books or podcasts directly through the speaker or the watch. I can't imagine that being very satisfactory, but, but I heard at least one person say that. Yeah, you can't do that, so... Yeah, and, and I imagine that the people around you would not be terribly <laughs> happy with that. Well, do it that when you're alone. Yeah, that doesn't stop certain people. I mean, just there are so many people who just walk around with their iPhones and the speaker and everything. It's like, okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> this has really nothing to do with, with the new phones or watches, but I am kind of curious. Do you allow um, the I, uh, iOS to automatically load the, the watch version onto your watch, or do you pick and choose? I pick and choose. I just allow it. I don't care. Really? Yeah. Do you it's find like, it getting overly crowded? No. It's, I mean, because I, I know which apps I use and everything else is like, well, it... I've noticed that some notifications are better or some apps, I mean, Audible, for example, um, it actually now pops up the Audible app when I play something on my phone so I can actually get the better controls, uh, things like that. And that's why I'm like, well, there's as long as, it's, as there's enough space in the watch. It's like, well, yeah. Just do it. Well, that's cool. Maybe I'll install the Audible watch app for that reason. Because you you all if you don't have it installed, you just get the regular now playing screen. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Robert, I want to go back to you. You said uh, that you like the app Weather Gods. I'm always curious, especially about weather apps. Why why Weather Gods? What does it do for you? Well, it, uh, it, it's it's a British based app, and the for whatever reason, the developer worked really hard to come up with a very nice uh, interface for those of us who use voiceover. And so he really went the extra mile to make Weather Gods, which is a really visual app, very accessible. And, uh, and it, it, uh, he's had a little trouble over the years consistently getting, figuring out, I think, what, what, where to draw the weather from. I think he's now mm -hmm. getting it from Dark Sky, which is another app that I like. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I wanted to support him in, uh, in all the work that he put into it, and it turns out that I like Weather Gods just fine. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you know how it is, and especially with, with the watch. I, I feel like this the watch is is taking on a life of its own. It's it's mm -hmm. becoming a more and more personal device. Yeah, it's just like our phones did. I mean, for a little while, our phones were our phones, and okay, so I've got a phone in my pocket, mm -hmm. um, and a cool phone in my pocket, and then it became a lot more personal device. Yeah, and the same thing I find happening with the watch that I, I've. I find it di more and more difficult to go through a day without my watch should I leave it at home. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I, I will always come turn around and come home and, and get it if I, yeah. in, the un yeah. in the unlikely event, I forget it. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, that only happened to me once, but once I had to get it replaced, I installed a beta version that bricked it. And oh, no. Without my watch for like four days. 
and I really missed it. I mean, with a phone, I could I can go without for a couple of days without my phone, um, but because I have so many other like I have a Mac and so on. But uh, with my Apple Watch, I actually notice it because I'm using it basically the first thing I use <laughs> I use in the morning. Like I tell my my watch good morning, and it, HomeKit starts everything up. And and at night, the last thing I do is I tell my Apple Watch good night, and it actually stops everything shuts everything down so very cool literally the first and last thing i use and i use it all day like fitness tracking and everything i mean it's even in the office i can i mean i'm just walking around in the office and i can see what my next meeting is and where i have to go and all of that so that's Mm -hmm. really helpful so i think when tim cook tim cook said i think back when they introduced it that it's the most personal device they have ever created i think that's absolutely true Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't share your Apple Watch. You don't, I mean, you might give your phone to your spouse or your kid or whatever. Mm-hmm. You never do that with your Apple Watch. No. At least as far as I know. No. Yeah, I have a lot of uses for mine too that are, some of them kind of unique. I work in my other life as a psychologist at a university and I'll always set an alarm to let me know when the 45 minute appointment is up, the session is up and I get that silent alarm and I don't have to uh, be, nothing, it's very unobtrusive. I don't have to worry about disrupting what's going on. And that's a pretty unique use. And just, uh, I love the fact that you can still get notifications about things that are going on from the phone and for, uh, breaking news or things like that. Mm-hmm. But you can get them completely silently with the watch yeah. muted. You just get a little tap on your wrist and you can check it when you get around to it. It's, uh, it's really nice like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm-hmm. I do the same thing in meetings. I, I might get a notification. So I might glance at it to see whether it's something important. I mean, I only get important notifications on my watch. Mm. Actually, that was, I think, a big effect that the watch had that I narrowed down the notifications I even get and see. But I can still, like, if I want to, or if I'm like, talking, I can just glance at it and see, is it something important that I have to deal with right now? Or is it, like, something I can deal with later? We were playing with the walkie-talkie feature on the Tech Doctor podcast yesterday, and Mm -hmm. that works really well, honestly. It's pretty cool to have a Dick Tracy walkie-talkie watch on your wrist. (laughs) I'm with you. You know, and Patrice, you and I sound like we have similar situations where if you're in a meeting, it would be rude or very noticeable if you picked up your phone to Mm -hmm. to see what the message is, but you can do a very surreptitious glance at your watch to find out, you know, what it is. And is it something, as you said, is it something that need to be addressed or is it something that, you know, is important enough even to bring up? I've, I've actually received messages in meetings from, from the other people in my office, letting me know that somebody else is here or mm-hmm. the next appointment is here or whatever. And it's, yeah. it's a great way to, to get those, those notifications and not be obnoxious to the other people around you. Yeah, even phone calls. I mean, you can just, if, if someone is calling and phone is on vibrate, you can just glance at your Apple Watch, see who it is. I mean, is it your boss that needs you right away or is it just someone, some random person that you can talk to later? Um, yeah. That's really a big difference, makes a big difference. Yeah. Well, so that's that's a pretty good wrap up of the watch unless there are any other particular features that either one of you want to talk about that you've noticed or found to be particularly beneficial. Anything? This is it. This is it. New for Series Four, but I was just curious whether you all got the cellular uh, versions or not. And both years, I have, and I have have them set up, and I spend my ten dollars a month or whatever for mm-hmm. the cellular. But I've, I bet I've used it twice because I almost <laughs> always have my phone with me. Yeah, but I've- part of me that's like, you know, this is so cool that that. For those times I don't have my phone, so I keep I keep paying the bill. Probably not too wise, but but it, it is a cool thing to have. I, I mean, I set it up. This is my first cellular version. I set it up, and I actually already used it a couple of times. I mean, oh, cool. I keep I keep leaving my phone at home when I walk my dog because I don't need it. Like yeah, I, I pair my Apple uh, my my AirPods to the Apple Watch and listen to my podcasts, and I can walk around and I can do everything I need and someone texts me, I can respond and all of that. So there's really no need for me to take my phone with me. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, four or 15 minutes or whatever, like however long the walk is. 
Now that's interesting because I did not go for the sell your option. I, I did last time mm-hmm. with the intent that if I, if I decided I needed it, I could turn it on mm-hmm. and I never turned it on uh, for a couple reasons. First, Robert, to your point, I very seldom don't have my phone with me. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, the, the, the whole $10 a month thing just bothered me a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm using the same, it's the same, my philosophy kind of goes the same, same way with the iPads. You know, yes, I could pay AT&T, in my case, AT&T, $10 a month to put my iPad on my, on my plan. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I, it's not like they give me any extra data for it. Right. So yeah. I, I feel like, you know, no, I, you want to charge me like a $30 activation fee or something. Okay. I'll swallow hard and, and pay that, but I'm not going to pay you when I can just as easily turn on uh, Wi-Fi, on, uh, uh, on my laptop or anything anywhere else. Yeah. And use it as a hotspot and yeah. use my iPad. So, yeah. I, I, so. I mean, I, I definitely agree. I, I, I mean, yeah. I paid for it. I'm, I'm fine with it. I knew, I mean, I knew what I was getting into, but mm-hmm. I don't get it either. It's like, I mean, it doesn't cost them that much more. I mean, it definitely doesn't cost them 10 bucks more a month. Well, They're I'm, making a good profit on it. I mean, other than just the setup, which again, I, I understand you you have to call in or somebody has to program it. Okay, I'll pay for that. That's that's but, fine. But you know, the, the ongoing, I'm not convinced that that they're doing anything but making money on you. And, and just hey, if you need it, you need it. If it's convenient yeah. for you, great. But not yeah. for me. Yeah, and even the setup part. I mean, they have the capability to set up multiple phones on your on the same contract for your family and all of that. So technically, I think almost everything is already in place to do that. And I, I mean, as you said, like a, even a ten buck activation fee would be fine uh, or if you get like extra data or anything extra on top of what what your plan offers I would say yeah okay that makes sense but it's literally for nothing almost nothing yeah, yeah. anything else on the Apple watch gentlemen no okay it's- it's so great. let's move move over to the phone um, because now we we all have new phones. And I did want to mention too that when when we were talking about how to how we got ours, I too, Patrice, am, am on the uh, the upgrade plan. Mm-hmm. So it just made sense that you know instead of continuing to use the ten, that I would get the ten S. Yeah. Uh, I think I had one extra month to to pay on the contract, mm-hmm. you know, because of the the time differential, but. Um, you know, now I've got this nice, bright, shiny new phone that I'm having a good time with. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I've got the same situation. I, I, I'm on the, but I'm on the AT and T next upgrade plan. I, I would sort of rather be on the Apple one, but I'm on the AT and T one, and I don't know exactly how I would get off unless I mm-hmm. kept a phone for a couple of years and then got off. But anyway, uh, it you know, it, like you, I had to pay them. I think a month. Yeah. To get yeah. caught up, yeah, because Apple released it a month later last year. I think yeah. that's, right. that's why yeah. it'll be interesting to see next year if, if that trend continues or right. if you've paid an extra month, how they handle yeah. that. Um, I'm sure it'll, it'll be financially reasonable. I'm not expecting any money back, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny how that works, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> so Patrice, how about if we start with you with with the phone? What have uh, what have been some of the most notable things you've you've determined since since receiving it? Um, I mean, oh, there are there are so many things. I mean, the, I I really like the plus size. I mean, I had a I had a seven plus, and I really like that size. So I was so happy when Apple finally, I mean, this year said, okay, there's a there's a ten plus now or ten S plus, ten S Max. Um, so, and, and what I noticed is, I mean, the screen is gorgeous as the 10 screen was, but then not just even, I mean, I didn't notice it in the 10, but it's even less because it just takes up that much less screen size or screen real estate. Um, so I think that's, that's one big thing. And then the other thing, I mean, the two other things is it feels more grippy to me. And I've asked other people that got the 10S and they and had a 10 and they confirmed that. So I think Apple, they didn't know, they didn't tell anybody, but I think they changed the, the, this, the housing a little bit. So it's a little bit more grippy. I, I can't, conf- I can't tell you what exactly, but it just, I had both phones in my hand and I could just tell the difference. It's like the 10 was good, but a little bit more slippery than the 10S is. Yeah. I had the same experience. I, I agree. 
Yeah. And then the camera is, I mean, it's, it might be a small improvement like on paper, uh, in real world, if you take pictures, you see the difference. Um, it, it is really impressive what they did for the most part on the software side, because the hardware side is minor improvements, I would say at best. Uh, but the software side, what they did with, with that little bit of change that they introduced in that phone is, is really impressive. I'm, I'm so glad to hear you say that uh, because I, I respect your opinion and I'm glad to hear that I'm not convincing myself that there's a difference. Mm-hmm. There definitely seems to be a difference. Yeah. And the, the, the other thing too that is, is so cool is the, uh, is the portrait mode, being able to shift the focus back and forth. Yeah. You know, the field, yeah. Photo. I, I, yeah. I love that. It's, yeah. it, it, uh, and, it, and it works exactly like adver- as advertised. Yeah. Um, I mean, common friend of ours, uh, Ewan Rankin, I mean, he's a photographer in the UK and he got the, te- uh, he didn't get the 10, he switched over from a seven and he is really impressed by the camera. So, mm-hmm. and he was, he was one on the, on the show, on the Mac show, he was saying, well, I don't know the difference. I mean, the camera seems to be the same, blah, blah, blah. And he was very impressed with, mm-hmm. with the results. So, and that's like a pro. I mean, he, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. The whole computational photography thing is is really interesting, and mm-hmm. I keep wondering when the can, camera manufacturers are going to do something, uh, or a little more, I should say, I guess, on board to address some of this, because yeah. they, I, I recognize that you know your phone is never going to be a complete substitute for a DSLR for obvious reasons. At the same time, though, they can they can do a lot of backfill with the computational stuff, and at the end of the day, I don't, it, it, I don't, I don't care what pen you use to write your letter on or mm-hmm. what processor you use to write the novel. You know, just I want to see the novel, and at the end yeah. of the day, that's kind of it. Because if I, I know that the pure the purest photographers will talk about how they go out and you know at the golden hour. And they try to get the apertures just right and the shadows just right and, yeah. you know, create the photo the way maybe Ansel Adams did. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, 99% of, of today's photographers are retouching or doing something, some kind of post-processing to it. So I find their argument against computational photography a little disingenuous and, and no, no aspersions intended there, folks. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So no letters, please. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I can't remember what that was. Um, Darrymple or Gruber, uh, they posted a, uh, Gruber definitely posted a side-by-side comparison. He was trying to take the same picture with the 10 and the 10S. And you could see in a lot of pictures the differences. And that was, th- those were, and I think uh, Darrymple said that, those are the kinds of comparisons you want to see. Because, I mean, any good co- photographer. I mean, you can give him a crappy camera and they will get a decent shot out of it because they know what they're doing. They know exactly all the tricks that of the trade so that they can get a good result of as that the crappiest, cheapest camera you can find. Hmm. What really counts and what you said is most people like us, I mean, we're, we're just using our phones for the most part. I have a DSLR, but I use my phone quite a bit. And what does, I mean, what difference does the, what Apple is doing make for us? That's what it, where it counts. That's where computational photography actually makes a difference. It's for us when we're using it. Normal people, not the pros, not the high-end like pros that actually know how to deal, how, how to work with the good equipment. For us, what's the difference? And I think you see, as I said, in Gruber's pictures, you see what Apple is doing, you see your progression. And ultimately that makes us happy because if we get better picture without really knowing how all that stuff works, if we get better picture out of it, that makes a difference. That's 99% of the people out there. That's where you make a difference. The 1%, they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm the first one to say that I continue to try to learn and get better. Me too. But at the same time, I don't have... I don't have as much time or the inclination to learn. Well, I, I want to learn about it. I just, there are other things I need to learn about too. Right. So, you know, I, yeah. I want to be able to take that snapshot or mm-hmm. even if I go out and say, okay, this afternoon, I'm going to take some really cool pictures in, in, in the backyard, mm-hmm. um, you know, get right down on my hands and knees and photograph an ant or something. Um, 
you know, the, the phone will do a, a, a spectacular job of that. Yeah. Uh, it's just getting getting better and making it more versatile for me. I, I love that fact. Yeah, mm-hmm. Exactly. For me, I'm particularly interested in all this new processing on the camera for the purpose of optical character recognition. I mm-hmm. want to be able to to take a picture of a of a, of a printed page or a business card or whatever, and and have a, a software that will recognize mm-hmm. that image and turn it into text. And I think we we really are at the place where that can be done so much more accurately and efficiently with the 10s and all the processing power devoted to to the camera to the image that it's it's pretty exciting Uh, and i mean you bring a bring up a really good point apple in june they introduced um like object recognition with i mean basically it's ar or ar kit and all the like the technical capabilities behind it without the Mm -hmm. ar part so they can detect uh, like uh, I think they they had a demo there where they sh- they had um, like a like electronics shop where they like were able to detect uh, like motors and yeah. cables and like whatever mm-hmm. boards and whatever they the yeah. phone could actually detect those and tell you what it is mm-hmm. um, and that capability is is I mean also we haven't even seen what we can do with that exactly it's so, really exciting yeah. though. Yeah. Give developers a couple of months and you will see, or even a couple of years in some cases, you will see uh, what you can do with that. And the the hardware that the, the 10 s or the, the processing power that the 10s brings, that was a significant increase. I think they said something about the 10 having, was it 600 million operations? And the 10 s I think is, was it 5 trillion or something? So I a think significant so. bump in, in processing power. Yeah. I, and, and Robert, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. I didn't even think about that from an OCR standpoint, um, that this would be that much potentially that much better and faster. I, I, I tend to forget that they have to capture the image first I, mm-hmm. and, and yeah. then process it. Yeah. And also the, the object recognition stuff is going to be really important. And it, I think we're going to see all kinds of exciting things that one can do who needs information you know if even if you need to walk into a room and get find out what's there and get the layout yeah. uh, i think it's going to be really possible to do a lot of that and we're just on the on the cusp at the beginning stages of some of that but it's it's right around the corner i'm confident yeah yeah me too. this is a small thing but for me one of the first things i noticed was that i feel like this phone is giving me better bluetooth range for my airpods because I have a pretty good idea if I put my phone down in the bedroom and walk away from it about how far I can go in my house before mm-hmm. I have to say, oh, oops, I forgot. I can't go mm-hmm. quite that far. Yeah. Now I'm able to go quite a bit farther and keep the conversation going or keep the music going or mm-hmm. whatever it is that is pumping through my AirPods. That's cool. Yeah, it's not something I, I've really heard written, seen written up anywhere. But it, it, for me, it, mm-hmm. it definitely seems to be a thing. Yeah, nobody talked about Bluetooth 5.0, right? That was or Bluetooth Not 5. That I was, yeah, I mean, but now yeah. just now to say that I, I use a pair of uh, AfterShocks bone conduction headphones when I go for my walk to get uh, GPS information from my phone, and with the with the tin, I would sometimes get a kind of a disconnect error as I was walking, mm-hmm. but with the 10s, it hasn't disconnected the Bluetooth once so i think it's better mm-hmm. yeah i i didn't even know that that made a difference but that's that's awesome yeah uh, it listen it just may be you know mm-hmm. a function of some small redesign and it's not something that's not yeah. officially a new feature mm-hmm. but it just was was very noticeable for me mm-hmm. yeah that's anybody, great anybody played with series shortcuts yet i have not i've kind of thought about it and i want to i want to I want a podcast about it. And so I need to learn about it, but it's not something I've, I've really had the chance to dig into yet. Yeah. I haven't played with it too much. I think I set up two shortcuts so far. Um, one with to play something on Castro and the other one is, um, I think weather with carried weather, I set something up, but for the most part, not really. 
Yeah, and I and I did just a couple of little things with um, my HomePod, mm-hmm. um, but it, but I felt like the first time I got it to work, it's like okay, this has the potential to be a, a big change. It's just a matter of now the developers kind of catching up, and all of us mm-hmm. catching up and getting used to the idea that we can we can do more with Siri than we have been. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's too too bad it's taken this long, but at the same yeah. time, it's here. So now we just have to learn how to use it. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done the homeport part even yet. That's, I mean, that's something I want to look into, but I, I haven't even figured out how that exactly works. Um, it's 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 actually pretty simple. You know, again, you just I, I followed along with some of the articles, and Apple published it has a terrific page of uh, listing everything that the series shortcuts can do, at least at this moment. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's it's absolutely well worth worth looking into. And again, I think. It's, it's going to be one of the killer features of mm-hmm. of this of the phone of this round um, mm-hmm. if we all just learn a little bit about how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting and, and a bit of a surprising way to bring more power to Siri. A lot of people have said we need to improve Siri, make it do more, and I would have never predicted as Apple is so good at doing, they surprised me. I've never predicted that would be one of the ways that it would happen would be through these shortcuts. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, we were we were asking for customization on Siri and that we could pick our default apps for certain tasks and so on. And Apple did that. I mean, I can I can now say, I don't know, send a message to this and this person, and because I set that up before, it knows that it's that I'm using I don't know Slack for example for that. Yeah, uh, and I can do that. Um, without even having to like configure or do anything, I just say this is the this is the shortcut I want, and this is the like the phrase I'm going to use for it. So it, it, it's it's surprising. I mean, yeah, I predicted that Apple would do something with Siri and expand extend it. I mean, that was kind of that trajectory was obvious from the developer perspective. I just didn't expect it to be this way and this fast. Mm-hmm. And and the risk of of slamming uh, the the Amazon device, and I'm being very careful how I say that, um, so I don't trigger anything. Mm-hmm. But so many of the new functions of um, uh, in that device seem to be less than productive. I mean, there there are a million of them out there, and if if they somebody happens to create the one that works for you, that or mm-hmm. that you want, I should say, then that's great. Yeah. But with with the series shortcuts. It's up. It's it's sort of between me and the developer to figure out what it is I want to do with their app, yeah. and yeah. and to a little bit lesser degree, Apple itself. Apple's yeah. giving the developers the tools. The developers are deciding what they want or can build in, and so as a result, I feel like the, mm. the ones that I've seen and I need to experiment with are potentially vastly more useful than you know, a- asking what size shoe somebody yeah. wears, some athlete. <laughs> right. Yeah. And and the cool thing is it's all machine learning. So it is it is tailored to what you are doing and what you need. So obviously also what the apps that, that you use are offering, but it, as I said, it's all machine learning. So all the suggestions you're seeing for new shortcuts, all of that is based on things you're frequently doing. So I think that's why it's so useful because it actually surfaces what might be like, what are tasks that you're doing frequently that might benefit from speeding them up? Yes. That's, that's really powerful. And then, I mean, the shortcuts app that most people don't probably don't even know about, uh, that's like a whole another world basically. And I've seen a couple articles where it's, it's argued that you would benefit from having a little bit of programming knowledge and understanding, yeah. you know, if then statements and, and yeah. that kind of thing. And that's probably true, but I don't, from, from the little bit, and I mean very little bit I've had a chance to play with it, I don't feel like you're that hobbled that if, if you really want to make this work, it's going to take you just a couple extra minutes to figure out the, uh, the logic of it. But mm-hmm. once you get that down and, and create one or two, mm-hmm you're off to the races. Yeah. I mean, in a lot of cases, you don't need if and else and so on. I mean, you can just create like two recipes side by side that do one thing or the other instead of having one that does two things. Yeah. Uh, I think that's that's usually fairly easy for most people, easier to understand than, than having more complex. But I mean, you're right. We bef- definitely benefit from 
<laughs> knowing a little bit at least of, about scripting and about logic. And it's just those little things, you know, I've, I've, everybody wants these quantum changes uh, that in, in all the versions of the iOS. And then when they get them occasionally, then they complain. Mm -hmm. And all these little things like the Siri shortcuts, this has the, the potential to just give me what I want in a little incremental bump. But it, it's to your, to your point, um, Patrice, you know, I, the first thing, I'm, and I'm not going to do it now, but the first thing I do in the morning is say, hey, S lady, good morning. And, you know, certain things happen in my house. Mm -hmm. And th that's, it was not that hard to set up and it's eminently useful. Yeah. And so, and, and that endeared it to me right away. And so as I see other things that might benefit from that, and like you say, now we're going to see this start to suggest ideas and, and things that maybe would benefit for us. Mm -hmm. And then the next step after that is it'll help us create them. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting. It's very cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, I actually, when I talk about the, the Siri shortcuts, uh, if, if I talk to someone who has used HomeKit and knows the HomeKit scenes, I actually tell them that this is basically the same idea just on a broader scope. Because, I mean, with, with the scenes, you could set up your own scenes. You could say, do this when I say good morning. Do that when I do say good night. Um, and now you can do it for kind of almost every app. Yeah. And arguably, to your point, a little bit easier, but definitely much more customizable. Yeah. Because you'll be able to control things within a particular app that the developer mm -hmm. will let you control. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What um, I'm trying to think. What what other notable things here? Um, we talked about the the migration process. That was so easy for me. Patrice, you said you had a lot of things that that really were striking you about this phone. Um, yeah, I mean, as as I mentioned, it was grippy. It, the camera was better. Um, the the screen size definitely. I, I noticed that Face ID is definitely better. I did a side by side with my 10 and my 10s. And I mean, it, the 10s wasn't fully trained, so it's kind of because also that is machine learning. It actually learns while you're unlocking it and makes it better over time. But even like day one, like a fully trained iPhone 10 versus a day one iPhone 10s, I could see that it was faster and less like picky with angles and so on. So yeah, I agree. I mean, they, say, they said it's, I mean, from, from the keynote, they only said it is improved and mostly on the software side, but I still think that they did something to actually make it better also for, from a hardware perspective. It might be something very small where something else was interfering with the, with the sensor array and they changed that and now it's better. I don't know, but it's, it just feels like it's not just software. Well, this is definitely an S year and the whole phone experience to me just seems more polished in a lot of mm -hmm. ways, more, more filled out than, than it was last year. Touch I, face ID is a good example of that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a really nice phone. It's not just hugely incrementally different from mm -hmm. last year's in my experience, but it's, it, it's, it, you can see that iterative progress mm -hmm. was made during the year. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And to go back to it too, you know, if you can't expect major changes every time, and if you got them every time you would be complaining yeah. because you'd be spending <laughs> all your time learning how to use yeah. the, the major new features and yeah. series shortcuts to me is the one this time that's going to take yeah. a little time for us to all learn. Yeah. But if you, if you will invest the time, yeah. you're going to get, a, a, a big, big leap, but yeah, I mean, that's the only one. Everything else, Robert, I think you used the word iterative and that's the way it feels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just just imagine that Apple would bring out a new phone like the iPhone 10 every year. I mean, there was a lot of people were complaining about the iPhone 10 and the gesture changes and Face ID and all the changes that the 10 introduced last year. A lot of people were complaining about that. Just imagine Apple doing that every year. I don't think that would work. You need yeah. Need some time for people to get comfortable with whatever design and technology and like gestures and everything that goes into the phone. You need time to like 
get people comfortable with it and that they know what they're getting into and like it work also work out all the kinks and so on and then you can like do another jump and i think that's what you're seeing i mean apple is doing that like they did that with the four and with the six and now with the ten and i'm pretty sure this this design is going to stick around for at least two three maybe four years well at some point how much more can you do to the <laughs> I said that last year <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think it's interesting you know the just the differences in people for whatever reason i've continued to really remain excited and engaged about the new phone every year and I look forward to launch day and it's just fun for me. But some people have, I think kind of grown weary of it all. And it's not, it doesn't matter so much anymore. So mm -hmm. I think how we're different like that. Yeah. I think we're, we're all early adopters like at, at our core. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're always anxious, you know, how much, how much better can the camera get? Mm -hmm. It gets better. You know? <laughs> yeah. And how much more control can I have? And yeah. Siri short gets, gives me more control. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I mean, there are definitely limits where it's like, I mean, at some point the, the increment on the camera side will probably not be that big, but then something else will happen. I mean, it's like face ID is introduced or something like that. It's like, it's it just, there's always something you can change. There's always something you can improve. Yeah. And I feel like every time, because I thought, I thought maybe I might sit out this year, mm -hmm. but then I saw the, the camera updates and it's like, no, nah, that's something that can really genuinely make a difference. And mm -hmm. the best part is I feel like it delivers on what they promised. So that when I, when I felt like I was getting a little bit better camera, I ended up getting a little bit better camera. Yeah, it, it wasn't hype. It, it's genuine yeah. there. Yeah, but it's also about expectations, right? I mean, it's about you weren't expecting a like hugely different camera. You were expecting a good, solid incremental upgrade. Yeah, one well, doesn't matter a lot to most people, but I was excited that the stereo separation on the phone is a lot better. It sounds better, and also now that the it's possible to to record in uh, with stereo audio directly from the phone, so that's kind of exciting. I was kind of surprised that <laughs> that it took Apple that long to do that. Yeah. I was like, really, we didn't have that before. I yeah, thought it, it is a little surprising. The videos were all mono. Yeah, yeah and I, I didn't even notice. I, and I'm, I'm embarrassed. I've I've sort of forgot about the stereo separation. I haven't thought about it because usually I'm playing it through AirPods or through an external yeah. speaker, so I'm gonna have to check that out. Hmm. But when you want to be one of those annoying people, just pull out the phone and play it through the phone. You'll hear that yeah. it sounds pretty just good. Just go outside and then just play everything. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll, say, I'll say Robert and Patrice told me that I had to do this to experiment. Yes, yeah. 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 Definitely do that. <laughs> one other thing though that I got that I was so happy about, at least for me, and it may not be for everybody, but all of the cases that I use regularly fit mm -hmm. I didn't have to buy it in oh. cases somebody was saying they thought that the camera was slightly different position and that was making some of the cases at least the apple leather case not fit quite right between the 10 and the 10s but i don't use a case so i don't know yeah I, I don't know about the apple cases but i definitely know some people who had cases that didn't fit so it just depends on how, like how snug the case. Yeah, what the tolerances are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, Apple, Apple only sells uh, iPhone 10 S cases now, so they somehow have cases that fit both. The difference yeah. is probably very, very minor. Hmm. Yeah, I think they said the camera bump was a little bit larger, but at least I've got one more case to try that I haven't yet. But everything mm -hmm. else that I have from pretty much my daily use fit just fine. And oh, good. That, that was nice not to have to, to be able to just switch cases and keep on going mm -hmm. and not have to worry about what am I going to upgrade to and am I going to have to get a temporary case until the cases mm -hmm. I really want are, are tweaked. So that, that yeah. was... I mean, I usually do case less, so... <laughs> I, I, I find more and more people doing caseless mm -hmm. and I'm still worried about the thing slipping out of my hand, no matter. And Patrice, I heard what you said about the, yeah. the, the, uh, the max being a little yeah. grippier, yeah. but 
they still end up being pr- pretty slippery for my mm. yeah. for my taste. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I have a sleeve if I'm just carrying it around. I have a sleeve for it that that protects it a little bit. But when I'm using it, I actually enjoy using the the phone without a case. I I, I think the case is beautiful and you shouldn't hide it. And that might be like a Apple. I don't want to use the 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 F word, the fanboy word, but like it might be that. But I I just enjoy the design too much to to hide it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, once again, that's the beauty of it. Each to their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So at the end of the day, is it fair to say that you're both happy with both of your purchases? I'm very happy. I am not in any way that I can think of disappointed in anything so far. I'm really pleased at how well it all works. It's clear that this year, a lot of time and effort was spent in cleaning up the operating system and making it snappier. And the the new phones, of course, benefit, maybe not quite as much as the old phones, but they still benefit. And it's just nice on launch day to get things that right out of the box. I'm not finding bugs. I'm sure there are some, and I'm sure we'll run across them as the year goes on, but man, it works well. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, overall, it, it is a really worth the price. I mean, it is expensive. I'm not going to lie. It is an expensive, yeah. <laughs> kind of an expensive hobby almost. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it's definitely worth the price. Cheaper than buying sports cars. That's definitely true, yes. <laughs> Cheaper and I would say more useful, but that might be subjective. Yeah. yeah. I've got an answer for that, but I'm not going to use it on. on the- <laughs> um, yeah. One yeah. thing we okay. haven't talked about just because I was thinking about the like the unboxing experience, the Apple Watch and the, the box has changed. Yes. So you now ship Great in- box. Yeah. I really oh. like that. Yeah. I was joking that everybody ought to go buy an Apple Watch even if you don't want one just for the box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I, I agree completely, Robert. It's it's a it's a once again it's a little origami project almost. Yeah, but, but this one, what I loved about it is I can actually get it back together. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Yeah. You know, which usually if I unfold the origami things, I can't put them back. This one I can put back together. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a little I, thing. It's it's so Apple. It's so. Yeah. Apple. I'm just Hello. curious about their choice of separating out the the, the watch bands. I mean, it, from the production standpoint, it probably makes sense because then they can just switch out the watch band, just put in whatever watch band you need for that watch and package yeah. it up. But I'm still curious why they did that, whether they want to like push people or show people, hey, you can actually switch out the watch bands mm. and that's how you do it, or whether it was just I mean, due to production, maybe they... This way they could like delay the production of the actual watch and just prepare everything and then just last last second drop in the watch once they had announced it or a couple of days before. What well, is true that you have to learn to put a watch band on. There's mm-hmm. no way around it. Yeah. So I, can see I, how I'm easy just curious it is. why mm-hmm. that happened. I have no answer, but I would like to know. Well, but, but Robert, you're, that's an interesting comment, you know, that you, you are sort of forced to learn how easy it is to put that watch band on. So does that encourage you to maybe say, oh, I'd like this watch band for week th- during the week and this watch band for the weekends or, you know, I, I want one for each day of the week or whatever. Th- there would be definitely some benefit to that because I know the first time when I got my Series Zero, I, there's – there's always just a little trepidation. Am I going to do it right? Am I going to break, yeah. something? Mm-hmm. break something? Yeah. Once you, once you did it, then it was no problem. But mm-hmm. I think a lot of people just, they slapped the watch on and, and took off and never really thought about changing bands uh, for a long time. And so this, this does encourage you to say, just see just how easy it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And it might just be a little bit column A, a little bit column B, like showing Uh people how easy it is and then also making production easier for Apple. Yeah. Yeah, It may be more about production, but I'm sure they wouldn't be disappointed if the side effect happened to be that people saw how easy it was and went out and bought more bands. Yep. That's (laughs) that's definitely. (laughs) Well, guys, we're running up against time. Um, Any, any final thoughts on the, the iPhone uh, or your choices of iPhone? Robert? Well, no, but it's really fun to talk about it and realize that we're having a good time with them. I am going to be really interested to see, and I'm sure it'll be another podcast down the road to see 
how the how the 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 other iPhone the 10R goes when it's when it's actually released next month. I think it's going to be a really popular one. So it's, it's cool they came out with three this year. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Patrice, how about from your perspective? Yeah, I definitely second what Robert said. Um, really looking forward to the 10R release. I'm also curious what the like the sales numbers look like. Did Apple like did they just produce a lot of like 10s uh, phones and and uh, 10s Max phones uh, because they were very available. Like I mean, I I know people who just walked into a store uh, like on a Friday and they got like they got the phone they wanted. So mm-hmm. there was definitely availability. So I'm really really looking forward to the to the 10 hour release to really see. Uh, which one is more popular? I mean, I, I think I agree with you that the 10 R is probably the the phone for most people, and it makes sense. Like I'm fine with that. Yeah, which is interesting, and and we don't want to get into a whole 10 R phone podcast here, but uh, <laughs> it feels like it's a lot less of a compromise mm-hmm. than the top oh, of the yes. line. That absolutely, it it, yeah. it was a logical iteration on the on the eight. It, there are a couple compromises away from the the, the ten series, but mm-hmm. at the same time, um, it's yeah, it's it, it made you stop and think and say, gee, do I really need to spend that money on that phone, or could I wait for the ten R? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. It is a little surprising how big it is. It's certainly not going to satisfy the people who who like small phones. Yes, and I think that was on purpose. I think Apple wanted to push those people towards the 10s and say, if you want a smaller phone, go with the 10s. Yeah. Which Apple's makes them more money. <laughs> yeah. It's their flagship phone. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's fine. And then just for the people who want something a little bit cheaper, they just get one option and either they like it or they don't. Yeah. I mean, you can still, I mean, you can still buy the seven and the six, I think. So yeah. Or the eight and the seven. I, I keep forgetting which ones are in the lineup now. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, you can, know, they've already been criticized for having too many SKUs. And, you know, if you had an eight or excuse me, an, an XR and an XR max, I mean, then that's just, yeah. that's that's just, just crazy. crazy. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, if you look at it, the, the lineup right now, it looks really nice. It's like the 10 S the smallest one. Then you have the, the, the 10 R which is like mid sized with a little bit like some compromises. And then you have the 10s max, which is the biggest one and the like most expensive one. So it's actually, if you look at it, it's a quite nice lineup. And I think that's, that's what Apple probably looked at and thought about. When the, and before we, we closed up here, the one thing I really appreciated this year was the, 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 the 10 X R and the 10 X R no, the 10 X R max feature sets are the same. The only difference is the size. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, with, even to the, the resulting to the, battery life, of course. Yeah. But. Even to the 10R, it's, I mean, it, the 10S, the 10S are identical. Like battery life is the only difference. Even with 10R, the differences are minor. Like, I mean, yeah, you get only a single lens camera. Uh, I, I've heard RAM is a little, I mean, at least supposedly there's less RAM in it. Um, but it's, it's minor differences. It's not, not a, big huge difference and i think that that, yeah. that speaks for apple but i i i'm afraid i'm going to get this wrong but i think in the sevens if you want is that right i think so if you wanted the, the best camera you had to go with yes. the, with the large size yes yeah, absolutely and this yes. time you know the only the, you get to pick which size you like but the mm-hmm. feature sets the camera everything else is identical yeah. mm-hmm. and I, seems- I like that idea for the top end yeah, that seems to be the new Apple. I mean, they did that with the iPad Pros. Like, the, the only difference on the iPad Pros is size. Like, do you want to have 10 and a half inch or 12.9 inch? Other than that, they're virtually identical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys, this has been fun. I, I would be anxious when we, if we get back together in six months or so to see how everybody's, how satisfied they are with their, uh, with their purchase. But I would say right now, folks, if, if you weren't like us and didn't lose sleep on that first night, you're probably happier the next day, but go, go out and, and, uh, and, and get yourself upgraded. Um, I don't, I can't see you being disappointed in either any of the new phones and definitely yeah. not in the watch. Either. Yeah. yeah agreed. So when you're not here, 
guys talking about your new Apple hardware. I want to make sure we let folks know where, where they can find you. Patrice, how about you first? Where, where's the best place to locate you? Well, um, I'm every week on the Mac show uh, on British Tech Network, and everything I do is on thepatrice.com. Great. It's great to have you. Come back more often. Yeah. Okay. I would, ha- I would be happy to. Now that you're in the States, it's a lot easier for us to do. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Same time zones even almost. <laughs> exactly. Robert, I know we mentioned the Tech Doctor podcast. Is that uh, the best place for folks to locate you? Uh, the Tech Doctor podcast is at dr-carter.com. And I'm Robert underscore Carter on Twitter, although I'm not on Twitter as much as I used to be. But I am around and still checking in there. So those are probably the two best places. And that's about it for now, I guess. Great. Well, thanks so much for being here. It's good to see you again. And uh, we we definitely do this more often. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Uh, Again, go out and do your upgrades. I I think you're going to love the upgrades because not only are they nice, shiny new products, but they add some honest to God, usable features. And that's what it's all about. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.